wanna be a weekend lover Yeah, I'ma be the best damn lover you got I wanna mess up your covers Something different, they have body shots now the from the if first time. Move, okay. Good kind of shots. They moved to that tree. I like the shots right here. A lot of good shots. Hey everyone, I am here today testing out the Sony 100mm 2.8 STF G Master lens. And of course, when you hear the term G Master for Sony, that usually means that it's the best lens that Sony makes for its E-mount system. And the model to help us test the lens today is? Hi, I'm Cheyenne Sanchez. And Cheyenne, you've been on the channel before. The last time we did a shoot was a while back, I think more than a year ago. Yeah. Last year, February. Mm -hmm. And I think we tested out a medium format lens. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit similar to this lens, um, but this lens focuses on the um, blurred background and tries to make it super smooth. So we've been shooting for a while. How's the um, pictures so far coming out from that lens? Um, I really like how it's turning out so far. Uh, like James pointed out, I really like the blurred background and how it's smooth. Mm -hmm. It just really helps to focus on the subject, which is you. Yeah. My second time using the lens and I'm more of a shallow depth of field guy. Mm. I, my style of photos is really blurring the background but then some people like my family members complain why do you drive so far to a place take pictures of the model and you don't even know where, where, where you're shooting at right because everything's blurred so this isn't shallow it still gives you a field of view where you kind of know what the background is but then the quality of the blur is just smooth mm -hmm. versus having a background that's blurred but then um, it's a little bit, as they say, nervous mm -hmm. or distracting. But yeah, I think um, overall, the purpose of the lens is to give it that 3D look. And you do look 3D um, when looking at the photos from the back of the camera. Okay, we have uh, one more outfit after this. Yeah. So we'll keep on shooting. And the colors are nice. Good job, Cheyenne. Very really good. Okay, very good. One, two, and three. Very nice. Your whole body can you move a little bit to your right. Okay, good. Very nice. Good. Okay, a couple more. Very good. Couple more. Some physical features about the Sony 100 STF GM lens is, of course, it's a G Master lens, so the build quality is very, very good really excellent build quality. Feels very solid in the hands. This lens has a aperture ring where you can turn it and indicates which apertures are STF. It also has like a macro ring 
uh, which will limit the focusing distance so you can focus on really close objects. And I believe the magnification is only 0.25x. It also has a side custom function button here that you can customize if you want to turn it into an APS-C uh, format, if you want to set it that way. Also autofocus and manual focus switch, as well as the OSS optical steady shot uh, if you want to turn it on or off on the lens itself. Okay, I'll continue to shoot Cheyenne. Okay, as we move to our second location, I want to talk to you about the internal features. This can only focus to about 1.9 feet or 0.57 meters. The filter thread in the front is only 72 millimeters, not really 77 like a lot of lenses. And the weight is not too bad, about 1.5 pounds or 700 grams. Uh, Cheyenne, how does it feel for you, the camera and the lens combo? It feels pretty balanced. Um, like you said, it's not too heavy. I remember mm -hmm. the last camera was a little bit more heavy and this one feels more comfortable in my hand yes compared to the previous cool and not front heavy where it feels like it's leaning no, forward it's it feel cool all right we'll keep on shooting there's some butterflies in the background good posing good smile Shoulder a little bit closer to your face on the the last the last pose. Yeah, just like that. Very nice. Here's your time to shine. I'll show me what you can do. Make a move. The way my hands feel on your body. The way we're dancing in the dark. With every move I make your falling. Take some more additional shots of the half body. This lens has a lot of elements and groups. It's 14 elements in 10 groups. It actually has a lens that has a nano AR coating on it to prevent flare. This lens also has 11 diaphragm blades for the uh, bokeh, but I believe the uh, main element responsible is the apodization uh, lens element. It has one ED element and one spherical element uh, just to help prevent chromatic uh, aberrations uh, on this lens. Just my position a little bit. One, two, and three. Good. Okay, still taking. Very nice. Very good. Some positives and negatives about the lens is the lens uh, autofocus motors is very, very fast and very quiet. The background that the lens produces almost looks like it's Photoshop. 
The background is very, very smooth. The quality of the bird background um, is defined as the bokeh, and the bokeh is very, very awesome uh, in this lens. The only downside that I would have to say about it is just the price. Brand new is really expensive because it's a G Master lens at $1,500. Uh, Cheyenne, what is your opinion so far about um, the photo shoot? You're in your second outfit now and uh, did you see the pics that we took here with some of the, um, the plants? Greenery. Yeah, the plants in the mm -hmm. foreground and the plants in the background. Mm -hmm. I really like that you could focus as well as um, have the backgrounds remain blurry or smooth mm -hmm. uh, like you were saying. Um, for me, I like the blurred background but like you said, it's a preference. Some people may yeah. like the smooth background. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I think the photos are turning out very nice. Cool. For me, uh, I personally don't own the lens, but for me, just because I've been used to always shooting with portrait lenses that are really, really blow out the background. You don't even know where the person is. I guess that's just my style. So I personally uh, wouldn't purchase uh, this kind of lens. I'm more of um, a fast prime person where the background is super dreamy and super blurry. Um, but if someone is after like the quality, quality of the, the, the blurry, the blurriness, then this would do its job. But yeah, I don't think it's for me. We have some time left, so we'll do, we'll do some more shots. Okay. Let me get a little bit lower. So this is the first time I'm really shooting for a back. So I just want to see how the lens performs at this distance. If I'm able to still kind of blur the background for that um, subject to background separation. And then I'll get some shots um, half this distance and closer and closer to um, Cheyenne. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit closer. This is three fourth body shot. Okay. Can I do some poses near these rocks? Why there's a lot of shots like yeah because it's like I'm watching a video and then I'm just like okay <laughs> yeah. that looks good that's good all right we are done with our photo shoot we've been shooting for about two hours and I did not realize that I took over 600 photos I think the exact number was like 625 around there I usually don't take that much photos during a photo shoot. Usually it's just like 200, but since I got um, the new Sony A9 Mark II, and this is my personal camera, I'm not used to seeing no blackout, silent shutter. So it's kind of like I'm watching a, mo a movie of Cheyenne modeling and then just taking um, the shots or frames that I think looks good. So I, we ended up with like a lot of photos um, the lens itself, I was telling uh, Cheyenne off camera, it's not really my, my pre preference. I kind of still like blurring the background, but maybe I should change my style 
to kind of more environmental portraits uh, because Guam is just so beautiful and when people look at my photos from the local island girls on Guam, they just see the model and not the, the environment, the background. Uh, but Cheyenne, your opinion about the photo shoot so far, or we're, we're wrapping it up overall. now, uh, overall, yeah. Um, it went really well. Um, at first I was kind of iffy just because the weather wasn't that yes. great, but no, thank God that the weather cleared up, it's not raining, and we were able to shoot, and yeah. I think the photos look great. I'm pretty sure we have some photos that we could use out of this. A lot, actually, yeah, a lot. But um, or one or two is good out of the 600 some. But yeah, overall, I really liked it. I really loved the photo shoot. So. Our viewers watching, um, they should they should have seen the photos already um, during the photo shoot. But I can tell already just by looking at the um, back of the camera, uh, this lens wide open. And you may be wondering, it says 2.8 on the lens, but in the photos, um, if you press up display, it always says 5.6. And I think the reason why it always says 5.6 is, um, like I said before, previous video, that there's an element in there that kind of loses light. So it is kind of working as a 2.8 lens, but by the time the light reaches the center, it's 5.6, so there's a lot of light loss, but um, very, very sharp, wide open, very sharp, no doubt about that. And the background is really creamy, but it's really preference up to the person purchasing this lens, and it is an expensive lens. Anything over $1,000 or even $800 is expensive in the photography world. Uh, anything else you want to add, uh, social media? Uh, yes, you can find me on Instagram and Snapchat under Shy Santis X. And yeah. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. And if you haven't, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for Guam Photography. All right, let's look at some raw files shot using the Sony FE 100mm 2.8 STF G Master lens. STF, I believe, stands for Slow Transition of Focus. So the first raw file we are looking at have uh, not been touched. It is unedited, clicking reset here. I usually use Adobe Color Profile, not camera standard. Camera standard to me looks a little bit too green, but zooming in 100%, and this is viewing the raw files on a 5K iMac. It is very sharp. You can see every single eyelash in Cheyenne's eye. And just look at the out of focus area, the, the bokeh, the blurred background. It is very, very smooth here. And the detail it picks up, like the patterns in um, Cheyenne's dress, and the transition from sharpness right here to out of focus area is very smooth. Uh, next example I want to show you is a more um, farther shot. And let me click reset, make sure. Okay, unedited again. Uh, if you notice the foreground, the out of focus area, it is very smooth. It kind of looks like someone added like a filter um, to this picture, but it's, it's raw, unedited. Uh, the rocks back here, if using a regular lens at 100 millimeters 2.8, it would be a little bit nervous, um, distracting, but it is very smooth. Again, very sharp on Cheyenne's face. Background is very smooth. Foreground is very smooth. So um, this really looks like um, a 3D image. Really great lens. And contrast is also very good. Uh, this is just set to... Um, I'm not even using uh, JPEG at this point, it's just only raw. Okay, another example I want to show you. Uh, this is pretty interesting. This is the edited file, but let me click uh, reset just so you can see. The foreground of these plants, and I was um, aiming really low as you saw in the video with the, uh, the A9R2. Uh, the outer lines of the plants have this kind of weird effect. Like you know, it's supposed to be distracting, but it just smoothed it out. It's it, this lens does a really good job. But like I said in the video, it's actually preference. Again, very sharp. It's actually preference if you want to have a lens that's very shallow, which this lens is not shallow. It just does the job of making the background really smooth. Um, or if you just want this type of lens where you don't want to do any Photoshop, but you just want to make sure the quality of the bouquets is there. Yeah, this lens will get the job done. 
Uh, let's see if I can. And the video is taking uh, shots that are far away. Uh, so yeah, those, let me click reset. Uh, lower down the highlights to get back to background. So very sharp on Cheyenne. Background still is able to be blurred at this distance. Uh, moving a little bit closer. Let me click reset here. Uh, bring back the highlights. Um, yeah, still very sharp, of course, and background's getting smoother. And then a close, closer shot. Um, this is, I believe, reset already. Lower down highlights, just get the background back. Yeah, just very smooth. But for me personally, it's just not my style. Uh, let me show you one of my favorite uh, shots from the, the shoot. This is an edited photo. But for me personally, uh, because I like more shallower depth of field, I like a little bit more um, blurred background. This is smooth. It is blurred, but the blurness is very smooth. Um, but for me, I like 135 1.8 or even just uh, 85 1.4 uh, just to get the more shallower depth of field and a blurred background. If you try to shoot like street lights with this lens or uh, try to get the bokeh balls as they call it, it'll be a very, very fuzzy circle. If you do with a regular lens like 85 1.4 G Master, the circle would be more defined. So it's really up to you and your style. Thank you for watching this episode of Guam Photography. If you haven't, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'll see you in the next video.